In this video, we're going to cover how to open a J Geiger crate. Um, when you receive your crate, you want to make sure that you check the packing list to make sure A, it's the job you're working on, and B, um, all of the shades that you ordered were on it. The next thing you want to do is make sure the packing list stays with the crate. You can make a copy of it and reserve it for your records, but you really want this to stay with the crate because it's the only indication of the order of the shades inside the box. They're going to be from smallest all the way up to largest. You're typically working in a home that's completely finished. They've got their furniture in and you are probably a little in the way. Section yourself off to a corner where you know you can work and kind of spread yourself out a little bit. I like to throw some kind of throw down on the floor to ensure that I'm not going to scratch or hurt their floor while I'm working. I also like to have a cheap plastic saw horses. These are going to allow you to stand upright. Uh, if without them, you're working on the floors on your knees, you're going to probably have a sour back in a couple of days. You will need some form of drill or impact driver to remove the screws from both the side and the face of the box. You'll also need a pair of scissors to cut the strapping. You're going to have four safety screws on both ends holding the idlers in, and then you're going to have between six and 10, depending upon how big the box is, about every six to eight inches screws on the face. Once you've removed all of the screws and taken off the strapping, then you can open your box up and you'll have access to all the shades. Once you've opened the box, you'll see on one side, you're gonna have double-sided tape. You'll also find your hem bars strapped to one side, and then there will be a plastic sheathing on top of all of the fabric. You need to remove the hem bars. You can just cut the strapping tape. We can set those to the side. We don't necessarily need them for fabric rolling, but we will need them once the fabric goes up into the window. You can go ahead and remove that and uh, take it out of its packaging. Now you have all of the fabric and it's all wrapped up in plastic. There's tape in the center and on the outsides. Basically, you just need to remove this. There's a handful of different ways to do it, but when you do it, you wanna make sure that the fabric doesn't change the orientation. If it was to be flipped over, it would come off the roll backwards. Now that we've got our workstation settled and ready, I'm gonna ask somebody to go and remove all of the tubes from the entire house, everything that's in this box. If you have your uh, packing list, you can go ahead and put them in order. You already have them labeled, so setting them in order will help you pull them as you need them. Now that we have the box open and all the tubes down in an order, um, we're gonna start working. This is our workstation. It's covered in tape so that you don't compromise or discolor any checking or flaking from the wood to the uh, fabric. This tube's probably filthy from being up the last couple of weeks, so we're gonna go ahead and just give it a wipe down. So go ahead and remove your uh, label. Give the tube a quick wipe down. A little bit of alcohol would probably be best just to get a nice clean edge for that tape to stick to. You can come back down to your work surface and then the tape. I try to start with a nice clean piece. And if you want to remove your idler, you can, but don't forget not too many times. Overhang just a little bit, maybe a half inch or so and then try to follow this spline line perfectly straight. I'm not asking for much other than perfection. Once you get to the edge, you can take your razor knife and score off flush to the tube. Once again, looking for our high-vis dot. It's not always gonna be green, but it'll always be high-vis. Once you see the dot, you can go ahead and remove that piece of tape. All that's telling you is that that side is the side that you want stuck to the tube so I know this is the side I want stuck to the tube insinuating its regular roll if it was reverse roll the dot would be on this side remove all of the pieces of tape all the way down once again a larger shade is going to need multiple people to get on straight there's the label that it comes with it tells you what fabric it is it tells you what size it is and the company and PO number and all the things you might need to know. Some people remove the uh, tape shield 
uh, before they pull the fabric up. If you do that, you're kind of working with a loaded weapon. So just, just leave it on until you're ready. Once I have my fabric underneath, this is how it would work if it were regular roll. Remove the shield. Now you want to start with just the first three to four inches on one side and make sure that you get all the way in the corner leaving no exposed aluminum tube and you don't want to be overlapping it too much. And then over on this side, same thing all the way up in the corner. Once you have both sides done, you can grab the middle and tighten up the roll and it should lay perfectly flush up against this spline line all the way down. Go ahead and give it a firm press, lift up, and then off of the work surface, go ahead and roll it up. Once you get it to here, you can just lift to pull. The tape will relieve itself. Remove all your tape from the bottom. Stick it right to the crate. And then you can take your label back out and stick it onto it and you're ready to do the next one. The reason why I stick the label back onto this one is so I know where it goes. And then lather, rinse, repeat for the next several shades. After uh, pressing this fabric onto the tube, I see that I've got a handful of wrinkles. Uh, this scenario, you would have to fix all of these. You can't have any wrinkles in the fabric at all. Any of these high points would be points that would pull and the fabric would walk or telescope to or fro with the way that those are. So we're going to go ahead and peel our fabric back off and we're going to start all over. Try before you buy and it feels like this fabric is a little larger. Maybe somewhere somebody had to cut a little bit off of the tube so that they could get their credit card. So I'm just going to let it hang over a little bit. It's not going to disrupt anything a sixteenth of an inch on either side. And now tighten it on the roll, press down and making sure that you are pressing out any wrinkles that you might have. And once you've got a nice flat surface, go ahead and roll that up, kick out your coattails, remove the tape and put on your label. The installation of the hem bar is obviously quite simple, but there are a couple of things that you need to think about before you do it. Um, it's going to be a quarter of an inch on either side shorter than the fabric, so a half inch less than the tube width. Every single one is going to have a label on it. You can remove that label once you get it. And then on the opposing side, you're going to have double-sided tape again. You're going to remove both of these as well. And that's just so the hem bar doesn't become a weapon later on during the installation process. That's, it says nowhere in the J. Geiger handbook that you need to install the hem bar before you install the shade. You 100% can install the shade first and then install the hem bar afterwards if you wish to or can. If you can't, however, you'll have to do this down on the ground. Give a visual inspection of the hem bar. If it's got any bends or twists, you can try and get them out. Um, we monitor this pretty good, but if anything happened during transit or here at the box, uh, just try and make sure that it's perfectly straight. This one seems to be pretty darn good. Your double-sided tape goes to the back of the shade, this being a regular rolled shade. We're going to go ahead and install it like this. If you give a little pinch to the fabric, you can set the corner in and then you should be able to get it in. Don't forget you got that tape in there so you don't want to stop. Once you get it about a quarter of an inch in, then you can go ahead and bring it to the bottom and set it on that tape. This shade is ready to install.